someone who's barely read any Dickens and who's only passingly familiar with A Christmas Carol, I feel very unqualified to do this review, but I'm not gonna let that stop me. Hi everyone, Rosie here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm doing a sort of different reading vlog. So back in October, I think, I did a reading vlog of one book and that was kind of cool. I thought it was kind of fun to check in as I was going and give you my thoughts throughout the book, and I wanted to try that for a non-fiction book. So over the next little while, I don't know, days to a week or so, I'm going to be reading The Man Who Invented Christmas, How Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol Rescued His Career and Revived Our Holiday Spirits by Les Standiford. As the title suggests, is a non-fiction book about Charles Dickens and the process of writing A Christmas Carol and where he was when it was published and also what impact that had on Christmas in the English-speaking world, I think, basically. So this sounds really interesting. Let's dive right in. I've read the first six chapters now, which is, I think, about a third of the book, and so far it's really set the stage for where Dickens was in his life when he was writing A Christmas Carol. So I'd heard before that he wrote it sort of very quickly when he was not in a good place in his career and he needed to get out of debt or something, but I hadn't realized that it was after he was already a successful author. So he'd already written Oliver Twist, he'd had like one of the biggest, if not the biggest novel of all time already published, had just sort of gone into a bit of a writing slump and people weren't really going for it and he wasn't really having the same success and he was feeling really down. And that's when he wrote A Christmas Carol. So that almost makes it way more interesting to me to know that it wasn't, this was his breakthrough thing, but this was almost a comeback. The book also does a really good job of situating Dickens within the publishing industry and the writing industry of his time, which I think is so useful and fascinating because it is so different to the publishing world today. One of his books, and I'm tired so I've forgotten which one it was already, had a circulation of when each weekly installment was coming out of a hundred thousand people buying it, when there was estimated to be 300 to 500,000 literate people in England at the time, whereas in America today, which is of course what it refers to, there's I think it said 200 million literate adults and 50 or 100,000 copies of something sold is like New York Times bestseller list big sales. If the book didn't put into its context these numbers, I wouldn't be nearly as impressed, but knowing all of that, you sort of just mind blown. I'm about 50% of the way through the book now, and we're starting to get in a bit to the stuff about what the situation around Christmas was in England and in the US around the 1840s and sort of what the history was and why it was in the situation it was, where it was sort of not really a big deal at all. Easter was by far the most important Christian holiday of the year, and Christmas, they referred to it as like, it was sort of like Memorial Day level importance, like it was a thing that people did, but it wasn't the whole celebration that we have now, and it hadn't been for several hundred years. So that's interesting, and I can't wait to see how that changes in the wake of A Christmas Carol, because obviously it did, and I think from the sound of the title of this book, A Christmas Carol had a large role in that. And on the whole, I'm just really impressed with how well the author keeps me wanting to read Given that it's a book where the outcome is pretty well known, I'm finding myself very, very gripped and like, I want to know what happens next. It doesn't feel like it's a certain outcome, even though, because I know a little bit about this, I know that it is. I only have three chapters left, but I want to put lights on my Christmas tree and bake some cookies, which I feel like Dickens would approve of. He was apparently a huge fan of Christmas trees. So I'm going to pause here. So far, the sections of the book following the publication of A Christmas Carol haven't been quite as strong as the first half or so. The author talks a lot about the huge success that The Christmas Carol was, which is really interesting, like 6,000 copies sold in the first four days. That's wild. But it also makes it clear that this publication didn't fix Dickens problems and like it wasn't a magic cure-all like we often hear it is in pop culture I feel like. The frustrating thing is we don't get to know yet how that resolves for Dickens. So much of the lead-up was about what was going on with him and his writing and his publishing and then we hear about some of the immediate consequences following the publication of A Christmas Carol. Copyright piracy was a huge issue back then, which I guess makes sense, and it was already called piracy, which I did not know. But then 
it sort of switches immediately to Christmas as a whole and how that was changing and what impact a Christmas Carol had on Christmas as a whole, which is interesting, but also just has to be like, what's going on with him? Like, he was not out of trouble. I, I want to know what followed. How did his writing change after that? Were his books popular again? And we just seem to sort of have moved completely away from that. So I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens in the last few chapters, but so far it's good, but not as great as it started. I've done the book now, and we do hear a lot in the last three chapters about what happened to Dickens after A Christmas Carol. We learn a bit about the four Christmas books he wrote after that, which I had no idea he'd even written other Christmas books, so that was really cool. Although to be fair, two of them at least have nothing to do with Christmas. <laughs> the only reason they were Christmas books is that they were published at Christmas in like a single volume bind up type thing. We learn about his literary work and the end of his career and stuff. That was really cool. Overall, I was really impressed with how much information this book packs into such a short and quick read. It's super fast paced, it's really really accessible and easy to read, but it is full of information and facts and stuff, so that was really cool. I learned so much about Dickens. Now, to be fair, I didn't know that much about him to begin with, but still. I thought that was pretty good. I think I mentioned this in passing yesterday, but I was also really really impressed with how captivating it was. I wouldn't go so far as to say that this is narrative feeling, but it definitely does sweep you in and pull you along and make you want to keep reading and make you want to read another chapter and see how this ends up and see what's gonna happen and see how it's all gonna work out. I think that's pretty cool, especially when you're telling a story that's fairly familiar. I feel contradictory saying I just learned a whole bunch, but like on the whole we know about Dickens. We know he ends up being a huge author, huge novelist, hugely successful. So being able to make the reader feel like, oh man, how's this gonna end up? Is this gonna work out okay for him? When they know that he's gonna end up being a huge author is pretty cool. I will say that I think personally I would have preferred a slightly slower and more in-depth book. I can't remember the title off the top of my head, but it was something along the lines of How a Christmas Carol Saved Dickens' Career and Revitalized Our Christmas Spirit, and I feel like sort of only half of that was delivered. If this book had been titled How a Christmas Carol Rescued Dickens' Career, I would have gone, yep, absolutely, got what I came here for, this delivered. But it didn't really go into the How It Saved Our Christmas Spirit side of it enough for my tastes. It was mentioned in passing and it was explained how Christmas wasn't really a major holiday and then how from the Victorian period onward it's grown in importance again. The author states that A Christmas Carol was influential and states that it had an impact on how we celebrate Christmas today and all of that sort of thing, but he doesn't explain it or back it up at all, which I wasn't a huge fan of. I would have really liked more information about how and why A Christmas Carol was influential, and maybe some sort of argument as to why A Christmas Carol was a cause of the revitalization of Christmas, not a coincidence that happened at the same time as an overall turning point in our culture. Maybe I'm being too nitpicky. I probably am. It was a fun book. It was really interesting. I enjoyed reading it, but it's not one that I would be in a rush to recommend necessarily. If it sounds like something that's interesting to you, then yeah, probably give it a go. But... I don't think it would make it onto any lists of like nonfiction books you must read from me or anything. As has been happening so often with me lately, however, reading this book has made me want to give Dickens another try. I think I read Great Expectations as a teenager and I did not like it, so I've sort of assumed I didn't like Dickens ever since, but this makes me sort of feel like maybe I should give him another try. Maybe now as an adult I would like his writing more, so who knows, maybe I'll do that at some point. However, if you have read this, please let me know down below what were your thoughts on it, and let me know too, are you a fan of A Christmas Carol? I assume most people are familiar with it, but maybe not. Maybe it's not a thing in your part of the world. I don't know, let's talk about it. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to watch more of my videos, please hit subscribe, and thank you for watching.